What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp Materials tutorial for you. So this is actually a question I got from one of the students inside the SketchUp Essentials course. And the question was, how do you model materials to scale? inside of SketchUp. So in this video we're going to talk about how to create materials and make them the right real world size so that your models look right inside of SketchUp. If you want to come check out the course and learn how to use SketchUp and also get on the live calls, uh, be able to ask questions and get into the, I believe it's over 14 hours of training I have for SketchUp, make sure to check that out at the SketchUpEssentials.com slash course. We actually have another live Q&A call later today. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so what we want to do is I've got a material from textures.com, this 3D scan concrete block wall. And what I've done is I've downloaded the material map right here, and I'm going to bring that into SketchUp as a custom material. So, so let's say that we do a file, import, and we're going to bring that block wall in, right? So if you remember, um, this is a raw face, so there's no grouping or anything like that. But when we bring this in, if we single click and then move our mouse, remember we can set the size of this material, right? But at the moment, um, it, it's kind of hard to get it to scale to the proper scale. So what we want to do is we just want to place that for now. It doesn't really matter where it is because we're going to adjust it in a second. So the first thing we need to know is we need to know how big the blocks in our wall are going to be. And so the way that I did that is I just went to um, Lowe's website and I looked up the size of a block, right? And so you can see that this has an eight inch height, an eight inch depth and a 16 inch width. And really all we're worried about is the height and the width, right? So what we need to do is we need to have our block have the proper size for um, a width of 16 inches, a height of eight inches. So the way that we're gonna do that is I'm just gonna draw a guide in here. So all you have to do is just use the tape measure tool. Um, make sure that you're in create guide mode. So you can tap control if you're not. And I'm just going to add a guide at 16 inches right here, right? So you can see how now um, this guide in here is showing me um, where 16 inches would be. Then I'm gonna do the same thing for the height. So I'm just gonna draw a guide to eight inches. You could also draw little edges in here, um, but this is kind of non-destructive. And so now what we wanna do is we wanna use the texture editing tools in order to adjust the size of this. So the way we're gonna do that is we're just gonna right click in here on our texture, and we wanna click the option for position texture. Right, so we've got our texture right here, and all we wanna do is we just wanna come in here and we just wanna find the little green pen. And we just wanna move that to the base or to the side of our block right here. And I'm just gonna pick a point that aligns with kind of the, the edge point of one block. And so I'm gonna single click and then click again in order to place this, but then I can click and drag my block like this in order to scale it down. So you can see how this actually scaled this out really nicely um, and the block kind of fits the size that it's supposed to be. So if I hit the enter key right here, then I was to measure this. Now I'm showing an accurate block that's 16 inches long by eight inches high, like this. All right, so let's do the same thing with a shingle texture. So this is a shingle texture that I've also downloaded from textures.com. I'll link to both of these in the notes down below, by the way. Um, but let's say we wanted to bring that in and place that on this face. So we would do the same thing. We do a file, import. We just bring this in at whatever size we want. We could try to get it right on the first click, but I find resizing it this way is really easy. But all we have to do, again, is just look up the size of a roofing shingle. And so in this case, for example, and so if you look at the three tab shingle right here, you can see how this is about three feet wide by 12 inches deep, but really it's gonna be about five inches tall on the little lip that hangs out. So really you want three feet wide by five inches deep. And so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do that same thing, right? So we're gonna do 36 inches right here, five inches right here. And so what that means is that means we need to come in here, right click, and we need to position our texture. We're just gonna go find this point right here. And remember that the tabs are three shingles wide. So I'm just gonna come over here and click on this point, I'm just gonna click and drag it over here. And so notice how right now, this texture image is too tall. Now you could say that this is some kind of like a specialized shingle that's in here. Um, that would definitely be a valid way to do that and just kind of leave it as is. So it's probably gonna be close enough for what you're trying to do. But if you wanted these tabs to actually be five inches wide, 
one thing you could do is you could just right click and you could jump out of fixed pins mode. What that's gonna do is that's gonna put you in a mode where you can set pins and then you can use it to drag and distort a texture. Well then, there's four pins in here, right? So you would just take these pins and you would just move them so that they're aligned with these points right here. And then you just drag them down. So you single click and then click again to place them and then you drag them in order to place them down. Now if I hit the enter key, this is gonna be in here and your shingles are gonna be that proper size with the five inches shown and the 36 inches wide right here. Now do note you are causing a little bit of texture distortion in here, so just be a little bit careful when you do this. Um, probably not gonna be a big deal for most things, but you just need to look at it and make sure there's not anything weird going on with the rest of the image. All right, so if you wanna learn how to use SketchUp, make sure you check out the course. We've got a ton of instruction in there as well as a community forum where you can ask questions like the one this video is based on, as well as live calls where we actually get on a call and talk through any issues that you have. So if that's something you're interested in, check that out in the link in the notes down below. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.